Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. A major landslide on the Bad Lil reintroduces discussions on a North South Link Road. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reassures the public that the risk associated with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine remains low. And the St. Lucian diaspora continues to contribute to the homeland. The landslide which occurred along the Bad Lil Road has reintroduced discussions about the North South Link Road. Hermady Mark has that story. A landslide that occurred on the East Coast on Thursday, April 29th, has reignited conversation of the possibility of a North South Link Road. Minister for Infrastructure Honorable Stevenson King, at a recent media briefing, said the landslide enforces the need for a North South Highway and Central Bypass. Government is exploring the viability of this project. A road from the east to the west, bypassing the Bad Lil and utilizing more navigatable um, um, terrain. It also enforces the point for the Northeast Highway, the Northeast Highway Link Road, rather, which would take you from Grosley to the East Coast. We are actively engaging in discussions and uh, we are about to sign an agreement to allow for the necessary studies to be undertaken. The, the East-West Link Road and the North-South Link Road. The East-West Link Road and North-South Link Road are intended to relieve traffic from the east to the west and north to the south. Honorable Stevenson King says the link roads are also necessary as government continues to improve infrastructure to withstand climate change. As you rightly said, climate change brings about new phenomena, and therefore it is for this reason that the government has been actively pursuing the idea of having a north-south link road and an east-west link road to bring relief and to remove people from the battle, which from time memorial has been an area of tremendous atmospheric events. And therefore, this event here today speaks to the question and the need for us to speed up the initiative and get some alternative routes around the island, north, south, east and west. That was Honorable Stevenson King, Minister with Responsibility for Infrastructure. From the Government Information Service, I'm Hermady Mark. As of 4 p.m. Friday, April 30, 2021, the Badley Road had been reopened to all forms of vehicular traffic. A new lane has been constructed to safely take motorists around the landslide to their destinations. In the interest of public safety, the affected area has been cordoned off with caution tape, cones and traffic signs. Motorists are advised to drive with caution and observe the warnings and guidance from traffic control personnel. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour thanks the various stakeholders including the utility companies, private contractors, the Traffic Department of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, the National Emergency Management Organization, staff of the Forestry Department, engineers, technicians and other support personnel who worked tirelessly to reopen the Bad Lil, providing safe access to all commuters. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is encouraging members of the public to get vaccinated against the coronavirus. Health officials during a panel discussion noted that the benefits associated with the vaccine far outweigh the risk. Details in this report. The risk associated with taking the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines remains considerably low. So said Medical Officer of Health Dr. Glensford Joseph during a panel discussion on Friday. While COVID-19 is associated with the formation of blood clots, Dr. Joseph added that individuals without being infected with COVID-19 may be predisposed to several risk factors for the formation of blood clots. In addition to COVID-19, we do know that in the background, we have several other risk factors for formation of clots uh, when you try to associate uh, the AstraZeneca with blood clots, such as obesity, right. advancing age, tobacco smoking, the use of contraceptive pills containing what we call the estrogen, persons who may have cancers, persons with immobility, persons with a family history of blood clots and injuries, trauma. So all these are things in the background that can uh, uh, result in blood clot. And more so, if you look at uh, some of the uh, developed countries, all right, you have on average um, 
some 900,000 persons develop uh, what we call venous thromboembolism, that is clots in the vein. And this is without the introduction of the vaccine. And some 100,000 or so die from blood clots each right. year in some territories. And so when you look at all this, and uh, the risk when it comes to the AstraZeneca is less than one in a million or even more so, the, the benefits of vaccinating far outweigh the risk. Assistant Principal Nursing Officer and National Immunization Manager Tekla Jabatiste indicated that as part of the National Immunization Program, a system for monitoring has been established. Jabatis urged members of the public to report to a medical professional if any side effects are experienced after taking the vaccine. An individual will be asked to fill out an adverse event reporting form and the information is then passed on to relevant medical professionals, following which the situation is escalated where an investigation is then launched. The purpose of the investigation is really to determine, to analyze the data that we have collected. So we would collect as much detail as possible surrounding the event, the person, you know, drug history, medical history, etc. All of this is in an effort to determine causality, to see what exactly would have caused the event. Because even if you're experiencing something after you would have taken a vaccine, it does not necessarily mean that it is the vaccine that caused it. Right. So hence the reason why it is important for that detailed investigation to and assessment done. and causality assessment. At the end of the day, if whether it is linked to, whether we find that it is linked to um, the vaccine or not, that in itself is going, we provide feedback. So we, we will provide feedback to the client. Okay, we found X, Y, Z, it may, it, it, you know, it seems that it, it, it was related to the vaccine that you took mm -hmm. or not. Community pediatrician Dr. Ugan Lucy encouraged members of the public to get vaccinated as St. Lucia continues the fight against COVID-19. The, the benefits of the vaccination way, way are true. Uh, uh, it's more than the risk that comes with it. And like we have said, we have so many things to benefit from getting vaccination than not getting vaccination. So I am going to encourage every one of us to go and be vaccinated. The panel discussion was held on Friday 30th April 2021 by the Ministry of Health and Wellness in an effort to sensitize the public on the importance of vaccines as part of activities commemorating the 19th vaccination week. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Ministry of Health and Wellness informs the public that during the week of Monday, May 3, 2021 to Saturday, May 8, 2021, the COVID-19 vaccination drive will cater to the general population for the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, as well as those receiving the second dose of the vaccine. Individuals who received the first dose of the vaccine during the week of March 8, 2021 to March 13, 2021 are encouraged to visit the vaccination site nearest to them during the upcoming week to receive the second dose. Individuals who received the first dose of the vaccine during the week of March 8, 2021 to March 13, 2021 are encouraged to visit the vaccination site nearest to them during the upcoming week to receive the second dose. Individuals receiving the second dose of the vaccine should also walk with the vaccination card which was given when the first dose of the vaccine was administered. People are asked to walk with a form of identification to facilitate the registration process. It is also recommended to come with a light snack and water given the possibility of a waiting time to get vaccinated. The vaccination sites will be operational from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The schedule for the week of Monday, May 3, 2021 to Saturday, May 8, 2021 is as follows. Monday, May 3, 2021, Sufre Hospital Grounds, VG Sports Complex, Denry Mothers Preschool. Tuesday, May 4, 2021, Philip Maslake Grounds, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds, Larissius Denry Parish Hall, Jack Mel Wellness Center, Cicero Wellness Center. Wednesday, May 5, 2021, Bellevue Wellness Center, Denry Mothers Preschool, VG Sports Complex, Etangs Wellness Center. Thursday, May 6, 2021, 
Miku Multipurpose Center, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds, Entrepot Human Resource Center, Ancillary Parish Center. Friday, May 7, 2021, Philip Maslake Grounds, Darren Sami Cricket Grounds, Vigi Sports Complex, Babono Multipurpose Center, Canaries Wellness Center, Sufre Hospital Grounds, Jack Mel Wellness Center. Saturday, May 8, 2021, Vigi Sports Complex. For more information, please contact the Community Nursing Service at 468-5321 or 468-5381. A sitting of the House of Assembly is scheduled for Tuesday, May 4, 2021, with papers to be laid by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, and the Honorable Minister for Commerce, Industry, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs. The House will also consider a motion for Parliament to further extend the state of emergency. The proposed extension is for an additional period of five months, commencing from the 17th day of May 2021 and ending on the 16th day of October 2021, in accordance with Section 17.6 of the Constitution of St. Lucia, Cap 1.01. St. Lucia has been under a state of emergency approved by Parliament that commenced 11 February 2021 and ending 16 May 2021. A number of bills are also down for consideration, including counter-trafficking amendment and tourism stimulus and investment amendment. Tuesday's sitting is scheduled to commence at 10 a.m. The sitting of Senate is scheduled for Thursday, May 6, 2021 at 10 a.m. In keeping with protocols established for the management of COVID-19, members of the public will not be allowed in the chamber gallery during the sittings. The public can view the live proceedings on the national television network NTN Channel 122 or the Government of St. Lucia Facebook and YouTube. St. Lucians in the diaspora are relentless in their charitable efforts for the homeland. Free barrels of children's clothing and toys were donated by the Grosley Community Association in the UK to go towards children at the Achievers Early Childhood Centre in Grand Riviere. Four barrels of clothing and household supplies were donated to the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF, by Veronique Fede of the St. Lucia Action Circle, Resource Mobilisation Officer at the SSDF Annual Edwin, accepted the barrels on behalf of the organisation. SSDF receives scores of persons on a daily basis and scores of calls, requests for assistance from the underprivileged in St. Lucia. And it is no secret that um, the pandemic is upon us and the situation has exacerbated in terms of the demand for assistance among and the lesser privileged in St. Lucia. And persons right now who have lost their job or who have already been poverty, experiencing poverty if they do have a dollar, it will not be to purchase an extra plate to put in the house or clothing to put on their back. So this donation from the St. Lucia Association, Action Association of St. Croix and Ms. Veronica Fede and her team comes at a very timely, op opportune time so that we could hand these donations, these clothing items, to our lesser privileged persons that are not able to afford. Accepting the free barrels of children's clothing and toys on behalf of the Achievers Early Childhood Center is Representative Patricia Altenor Rosalie. Okay, on behalf of the underprivileged and also the children at Achievers Early Childhood Development Center, I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to the Rosalie St. Lucia Community Association in the UK for your generosity over, after over 45 years and counting. They continue to champion the cause. They continue to champion the cause. I wish to say thanks for this kind gesture. It is most welcome at this time, especially as we are going through a pandemic. I strongly believe that the contents of these barriers will go a long way in assisting not just the children, but their parents as well. Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs expressed thanks to the St. Lucians abroad who continue their humanitarian efforts for St. Lucia during the pandemic. I want to say to the Grosley Association in the UK, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is not the first time you have and I know you'll continue doing. So we just want to say thank you for your continued support, your loyalty and your patriotism to your country. The St. Lucia Action Circle of St. Croix, and the president being Mrs. Veronique Fede, have 
decided that she will, sub, she will um, donate those four barrels, four barrels to the SSDF so that they can distribute to the needy. Although they're experiencing the challenges of the pandemic themselves, many have lost their jobs, yet they have not stopped. In fact, their contributions to St. Lucia has increased. As you have noticed, the traffic in your office and my office, it is relentless. They have not stopped donating, donating, donating. Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs, Her Excellency Dr. Joyce Lynn Fletcher. Bakashri's constituency council recently concluded a consultative meeting with its tenants of the huts located on Jabati Street, Castries. The consultation was not the first and focused on the second component of the first phase of the market redevelopment project, which will result in the relocation of tenants to the old fire service headquarters site on Jeremy Street to facilitate the building of the box park. The box park is one of several components of the Castries market redevelopment and falls under the second phase of the redevelopment plan aimed at modernizing the city's competitiveness. The project aims to improve the overall presentation and the quality of service offered by micro-entrepreneurs conducting business at this location. The box park will be a two-story rectangular structure designed with the intention of meeting the needs of tenants, offering a diverse range of services. The ground floor will feature the following, 16 convenience shops, 8 fish vending shops, 6 meat vending shops, 2 toilets with a closet for janitors. The first floor will feature a combination of 12 shops, bars and restaurants, male and female toilets, and dining and circulation spaces. It is important to note that the structure has been designed to resist lateral loads from seismic forces and hurricane force winds. Members of the public and tenants will be updated regularly on the plans as construction of this component of the Castries market redevelopment advances. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Merci, Otta Janelle. Merci, Madame, Department qui n'est responsable de la formation du gouvernement à cette ci à CGIS. En ce moment, la télévision nationale pays à NTN, qui a cette nouvelle à Creole, pour cette Primus Hutchinson. Il y a un mauvais affalaï qui est une cause, il y a une grosse portion, un grand chemin à mon bas de pour dommager, j'ai poussé encore plus fort la nécessité à pour l'année en l'autre route pour faciliter la transportation sur la façade sud-est du pays. Gros affaire à cela, c'était un résultat de un pile la pluie qui tombait mercredi au soir ou jeudi bon matin, semaine passée, et que ça a déplacé un barouad pour la transportation pour réagir sur la de façade route gauche de la situation. La situation a l'occasion de la première ministre Honorable Alain Chasney et le ministre des Affaires et du Développement économique, c'est Honorable Guy Joseph. À ce moment, le ministre qui est responsable pour la construction et les travaux, Honorable Stevenson King, a parmi l'autre grec pour te visiter le mauvais dommage de la travail a commencé immédiatement pour te vivre et faire possible pour la transportation continuer comme des habitudes et que pour 4 heures après-midi, ça c'est le 30 avril 2021, il y a passé 9 déjà en place pour sa fête. La jeune en ligne chimique qui bat vite, mais en pied, et puis à l'eau pour caution et protection pour faire possible pour l'autre passager conduit au Luan à Falaïla pour continuer à se route. En l'intérêt, protection, mon public là, la jeune Bawad au Luan à Falaïla avec divers signes, car montrer, ça c'est signe trafic, car montrer des gros protection et précaution qui nécessaire. Ministère a créé à se tout chauffer, à se l'auto passager pour prendre toute précaution avec l'autre l'auto qui nécessaire. Et pour observer ces signes qui ont baillé et qui ont les chauffeurs de l'auto pour prendre garde. 
ministère des Affaires, Construction et Travaux, car vous remercie tout le monde qui a assisté, en particulier ces compagnies utilitaires, ces travailleurs privés, département trafic, NIMO, travailleurs haut département, les forêts, les ingénieurs, travailleurs techniques, et toutes les autres qui supportent et travaillent. C'est tellement web pour te vu et ouvert chez Badlila. En parlant de ça, si vous êtes le ministère des Affaires, Construction et Travaux, M. Ivan Daniel, j'ai une opinion concernant le plan pour bâtir une autre route chemin pour faciliter la meilleure route pour la transportation qui a sorti de la façade de vieux fort et de nuit pour entrer en Castri et la façade de notre pays. Le mauvais affaire qui a croisé le grand chemin à ce bas de la semaine passée, j'ai encore renforcé la nécessité pour considération sérieusement la construction de un grand chemin pour sortir de Gozile. Pour des nuits, M. Daniel déclare que le gouvernement a travaillé très wed, mais très sérieux à ce projet. Le Premier ministre a parlé de la il a continué pour parler. Um, ça, c'est très important pour le pays. Um, Badlil, nous sommes pour continuer à servir, mais nous sommes pour mettre des risques. Nous sommes pour, à temps à présent, nous sommes pour faire attention à nous examiner ce qui a fait. Et toujours croire que les nouvelles sécurités, Um, la plus ça dat en bail qu'il fait ici. So ça c'est yon bail mon toujours ni les lieux mon mais marqué quoi mon dégai ouais en en side façade si mais en chez mes descendants pourquoi quoi de laisser mon nom qui caille descend. Mais pour ça c'est c'est en en l'autre side là qui descend chez mes même qui descend. So c'est c'est bail nous ni pour conseiller c'est ingénieur pour qu'il examine parce que c'est c'est wall là qui là il y aura il y aura là pour combien temps avec yon bail pressure. Quand il consiste, quand encore Chen y a l'autre session, mardi le 4e jour, en mois de mai 2021, avec deux sessions, le Premier ministre, le Sé, Honorable Alain Chasney, qui est aussi le ministre qui est responsable pour faire finance pays, et aussi le ministre qui est responsable pour le commerce, l'industrie et pour les consommateurs, il a dit qu'il a présenté un papier qui n'est pas adressé. Motion qui est devant le Parlement, en fait, quand il consiste, c'est pour le Parlement approuver. Ajouter en l'autre 5 mois pour payer à rester en bas cette restriction. Et ça a commencé le 17, le 17 en mois de mai et qui a le 16 en mois d'octobre 2021. Ça a fait en bas la constitution, cette ci qui a fait le gouvernement pouvoir pour déclarer que c'était temps de secours. Ça a été premièrement fait pour une période de 90 jours et qui a commencé le 11 février et qui a fait le 16 en mois de mai 2021. Là aussi, il y a un débil, un débil pour considérer, et comme la coutume, en considération, pour caution, pour ménager la maladie de Corona et pour suivre ce protocole que les autorités de ménagement COVID ont déjà établi. Même public n'a pas trouvé permission pour assister à la session en galerie, car il est là. Alors, le public là, ça a session, avec garder face fasse public à sa télévision NTN, et bien à sa page Facebook gouvernement, et bien YouTube. Session qui consiste à commencer à 10h mardi bon matin et à le 4e jour en mois de mai 2021 et que c'est là qu'il y a une session jeudi le 6 en mois de mai 2021 qui a commencé à 10h bon matin. Et c'est comme ça nous avons fait une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation. Je ne peux pas encore. Si vous avez la vie, vous avez posé une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez présent? Je vous remercie de vous présenter au channel. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NPN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.